Hello and welcome to this video tutorial from TrainSignal. The following clip is from TrainSignal's Cisco CCNA Security Training Package, featuring over 13 hours of CCNA security training. As you progress through your studies, especially your security studies, and if you're already in a security network admin role, you, like me, may never fail to be amazed at the different protocols and innocent little services that can be used against us. And DHCP falls into that category. DHCP would seem to be about as innocent as it gets, but it can be used for network attacks. It can be exploited by a potential attacker. The potential for trouble begins when a host sends out a DHCP discovery packet. And we know the DHCP process. The PC there is going to send out a DHCP discovery message. It's going to be a broadcast and DHCP servers that hear that broadcast will reply with an offer. And we know that if there are multiple DHCP servers and they both send out offers or they all send out offers, the first one that the requesting host receives is going to be accepted. So that's actually what's being exploited because part of that DHCP offer is the address to which the host should set its default gateway. Now in this network there's no problem because there's only one DHCP server and we saw that it was valid. And the, the host will receive the DHCP offer and set its default gateway accordingly. But what happens if a DHCP server that doesn't belong on our network, a rogue server, is placed on that subnet? Well now we've got a bit of a problem because that host again is going to use the first DHCP offer packet it receives. It's going to accept that offer and use the information in it. And in this case, if the host uses the offer from the rogue server, the host is going to be setting its default gateway to the rogue server's IP address. Now the rogue server could also have the host set its DNS server address to the rogue server's address as well. And that again will open the host and the network to several nasty kinds of attacks. DHCP snooping allows the switch to serve really as a kind of firewall between the hosts and untrusted DHCP servers. DHCP snooping is going to classify interfaces on the switch into one of two categories, trusted and untrusted. DHCP messages that come in on trusted interfaces, they're going to be allowed to pass through the switch. But not only will DHCP offers or messages received on untrusted ports be thrown out, they'll be discarded, the port itself will be placed into error disabled state. So that's pretty severe, but again, it's a good service to be running. Now, you're probably asking, as I would, how does the switch determine which ports are trusted and which ones are untrusted? Very important, by default, the switch considers all ports to be untrusted. So if you run DHCP snooping on the switch by default, you can't have any trusted ports. You don't have any. So you've got to go on as the network security admin and manually configure the ports that you want to be trusted. So we better remember to configure the switch with some trusted ports or we're really out of business as far as DHCP goes. Now we're going to bring the router up in a moment and we'll take a look at the basic commands on how to configure and verify DHCP snooping. But first, we've got to verify, excuse me, enable it on the entire switch to begin with. So we'll do just that on this switch. And again, we have to enable it globally to begin with, snooping that is. Let's use iOS help here for the just IP DHCP. Because we've got quite a few options here. You certainly don't have to know all these yet in your career. But snooping is the one we do need to know about. So that's the one we're going to use here. And you can see we've got a couple of options here as well, but we're going to go with carriage return, which simply enables DHCP snooping. Now we use the up arrow and use the VLAN option. DHCP snooping VLAN fist number or VLAN range. I'm pretty sure that's supposed to say first. And you just simply put the range of VLANs or the VLANs here that are going to be using snooping. So if we just wanted our VLAN 4 to use it, then we could do that. And that's all there is to it. So we've now enabled DHCP snooping for VLAN 4, but remember, all of our ports are untrusted by default. So if we have a trusted DHCP server off a given port, which we should, then we need to configure that. 
So we're going to do that right now. Let's say it's off port 010. And you can see that we've got a couple of options here. The one we're really interested in is trust. And that's it. So that's how we configure a, an interface to be trusted with DHCP snooping. Let me do a clear screen here. I want to show you one more option that you probably remember from earlier studies. If not, it couldn't hurt to review from your CCNA studies. You learned about a DHCP relay agent and option 82. We still don't know what happened to the first 81 options. But usually the DHCP relay agent information option is referred to as option 82. And you'll see it mentioned here in just a moment. But let me bring up how you can enable that. And it's the information option here. And there's the first reference to option 82. And that's in the format. We're not going to get into option 82 that far, but you should know how to enable it. And there it is, IP DHCP snooping information option. That just depends on your network setup, but you may have to enable option 82. And again, if you're not familiar with the DHCP relay agent from your NA studies, couldn't hurt to go back and review that as well. You can verify your setup with the show IP DHCP snooping command. And from top to bottom, note that while we did not configure DHCP snooping on VLAN 1, it is there by default. DHCP snooping is configured on the following VLANs. We did manually configure it on 4, but not on 1. So 1 is going to be there by default. Insertion of option 82 has been enabled. And here you're going to see a list of interfaces that you've actually configured and yes, it is trusted right now, Fast Ethernet 010. So there's also one more thing here I wanted to show you with that rate limit. Notice that the rate limit is set to unlimited. That rate limit refers to the number of DHCP packets that the interface can accept in one second. That's PPS. And if you want to change that value and possibly protect the interface against a concentrated stream of spoofed DHCP messages, you can go to that interface and change that rate. There's the limit option we saw earlier. And then it's snooping rate limit 1 through 2048, but you do not need to leave it at unlimited. That's not a requirement, but it is something for security purposes that you should know about. But that's really all there is to the actual configuration of DHCP snooping. But as you're going to see, the next two features we talk about, dynamic ARP inspection and IP source guard, actually depend on DHCP snooping being enabled. So let's get into that discussion now and talk about the dynamic ARP inspection.